Hello and welcome to English Literature with Susan. Today, here I am with an introduction and an analysis of Elizabeth Bishop's short poem, One Art. Elizabeth Bishop is one of those writers who stand at the borderline of modernism and the next era in poetry. And she, though, uses some of the techniques, some of the ideas, and let's say traditions uh, held by the modernists, she also criticizes them. And she, she, she stands somehow aloof and away from those elitist modernists and avant-garde writers of, of her predecessors, uh, just uh, predecessors, we can say, or the previous generation of the authors like Pound and Eliot. She, um, she had another view of life Everything is, is, let's say, life size in her poetry. If you're back to small topics, to shorter forms of poems, to simpler formulations of a poem, structures of her poems are simple compared to her modernist peers, for example, especially those modernists who were writing at the first two decades of the 20th century, like T.S. Eliot, once again, because she has a stance towards T.S. Eliot as well. Uh, by the way, one thing which, um, as a major uh, idea or function, divides Elizabeth Bishop from her immediate predecessors is her understanding of the condition of chaotic life. That chaotic life had somehow uh, confused figures such as such as W. B. Yeats when he says turning and turning in the white and gyre in his second coming, or when we see the fragmented style of uh, the poetry written by T. S. Eliot. But this is not the case uh, with Elizabeth Bishop. She has uh, come into terms, let's say, with the condition of change. And it's, it's like that if the world is changing constantly, let's say change with it. So she chose to, to make and take many travels, uh, many journeys, uh, so, so, so that to feel the change, to feel the instability. So she becomes the mirror image of her times. And in this way, she kind of resolves, uh, she kind of resolved the problem, uh, which was uh, the issue entangling the minds of, of uh, modernists such as Joyce, Eliot, Pound, and even uh, Wall Stevens. Uh, she's somehow compared with Wall Stevens because of the presence of nature in both of these American poets and also the, their smooth tradition towards the new world uh, and the chaotic condition of living. Uh, but they are different in that in Wolf Stevens we hear a godlike kind of sound, a godlike, uh, uh, let, let's say, persona, speaker, while such a godlike attitude is absent from Elizabeth Bishop's poetry. And that's how she's distinguished from the elitist uh, trains of thought of the romantist, uh, uh, sorry, modernist poets. Uh, so let's go to one art. She talks about ordinary things happening in life. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost, that their loss is no disaster. Everything seems to be so simple that we lose some things all throughout the, our lives. But, but maybe uh, the conclusive stanza of the poem, the, the last one, uh, changes all these ideas. but So so she's uh, providing us with a preface, with an introduction to the main idea. So these are now the main ideas um, of the poem, maybe. She's going to make a comparison with, uh, between losing these things and losing something else. Lose something every day, except the fluster of lost store keys, the hour belly spent, the art of losing isn't hard to master. And she has that refrain, the art of losing isn't hard to master, to be repeated throughout uh, the stanzas of the poem. The practice losing farther, losing faster, places and names, and where it was you meant to travel. None of these 
will bring disaster. Once again, I remind you that Elizabeth Bishop um, examined her life and her attitude toward life by explorations she made, by travels she made. So she's kind of um, at home with the condition of not being home. And uh, she somehow uh, um, demonstrates this idea in this poem. I lost my mother's watch, and look, my lost or next to lost of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. Uh, one by one, the, uh, the things she's losing um, are getting bigger, at least um, in the emotional load they had. At first, it, there, there is a key. Okay, the keys are not important, maybe, but these are important. They did a home is loaded with memory, or the or her mother's watch has a memory in it. So we see that as she's giving more weight to to the thing which is lost. I lost two cities, and even now they are bigger in scale. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent. I miss them, but it wasn't a disaster. So uh, we see that the expense is getting larger, um, the load is getting uh, somehow weightier, that she may have memories with places, especially, or with people living in those places. And well, we come across the last stanza, which is the longest one, having four lines, even losing you, the joking voice, a gesture I love, and now she gives details. I shan't have lied. It's evident the art of losing is not too hard to master, though it may look like. Write it, because she's reluctant to write it, because it's not like a disaster. But but she writes it at the end of the day. So um, th that's how she juxtaposes something material with something emotional. And maybe th this is uh, this is to show the comparison. That maybe it's not that much weighty. It's not uh, that much, let's say, of a great value if you lose a watch or something, or if you leave your home. But, but losing someone dear to your heart uh, must must be this much weighty. That she's pushing herself to write this poem, maybe to cure um, her her wounded soul. So this was. My explanation of the art of losing isn't hard to master, or let's say one art uh, by Elizabeth Bishop. I hope you have enjoyed it.